So we're really excited to present this tonight. My name is Tony Quintana. I'm the plant-based eating program manager with Animal Protection of New Mexico. I'm Mickey, <clears throat> wife, mom, cook, you know. Co-pilot. So yeah, we'll <laughs> share a little bit more about ourselves in just a moment. So yeah, and we're going to um, just start off by talking a little bit about what we're presenting tonight. So what we've come up with is 10 tangible steps that you can take toward getting you moving and going on a plant-based diet, right? So a lot of times, you know, people, um, we want to make change and we get real excited about it and we start taking all these steps, right? Mm -hmm. We're trying new recipes, we're we're joining groups, we're downloading apps, we're doing all this stuff. Jump in head first. Right. And we're taking all these steps, but then we're not really getting toward our goal. It feels like we're just going in a circle, like that image on the right there, <laughs> right? So what we're trying to do is give you steps that actually elevate you to the next step uh, toward ultimately being successful. Mm -hmm. So we want to give you, you know, tangible things, practical things. And our focus is on making this sustainable. Yeah. So like Mickey said, when you dive in, you know, go, go in head first, um, a lot of times we get overwhelmed and then we can't sustain it in the long mm -hmm. term. So we're presenting, you know, ways that you can make this sustainable in the long term and make it a long term lifestyle change. Right. Right. Um, and so just to know with that, we're not this is not like a cookie cutter program. Um, sometimes people are looking for that, like, you know, I just want a meal plan that outlines exactly what I'm supposed to mm -hmm. eat. <clears throat> or, you know, something like that, step by step to follow um, that everybody does the exact same thing. And that's not what we're presenting here either. This is to customize it for you mm -hmm. as an individual. And that's where that sustainability part comes in. Yeah. Sometimes you want like a, a jump start. You know, we're not like throwing shade at cookie cutter yeah. programs. There's some good ones out there. There are good jump start programs. Yeah. If you want that jump start. So a couple ones that, you know, we can just mention real quickly is with PCRM, the Physicians mm -hmm. Committee for Responsible Medicine. If you go to PCRM.org, they've got some great meal plans and a 21-day kickstart program that you can follow step-by-step step if you want that sort of kickstart. Also, PETA on their website, PETA.org, they've got a two-week meal plan that you can follow. And sometimes they can help you just learn what you like and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, again, the vast majority of us can't follow a step-by-step -step meal plan for the rest of our lives. Yeah. It's not realistic. And so while that might get you started, perhaps that coupled with the information today will get you to the point where it's sustainable um, to make right. it a lifestyle change for yeah. you. And then, you know, those are some free resources, some paid resources, Forks Over Knives, their website has a paid meal plan uh, subscription where they give you recipes, you know, meal plans uh, each week. And then if you are in the Albuquerque area, or in the DC area, there's a great company called Ruby Reds Vegan that does meal delivery service. So you just pay a weekly fee and then you get three meals. Uh, you get breakfast, lunch, and dinner for five days mm -hmm. delivered to your doorstep. And it's all whole foods, plant-based, and it's amazingly delicious. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go that route, um, you know, if you have the funds to sustain it, that could be a sustainable right. thing. <laughs> I would let somebody cook for me <laughs> five days a week, you know, if I could pay for it each time. Yeah. <laughs> so just some options, but what we're doing is a little bit different than that. And hopefully we'll help you, you know, again, we're going with the sustainability with that, you know, I said, we would share just a little bit more about ourselves. You know, we're, so um, we're raising two kids. They've been vegan for almost five years now. Um, so we kind of have that experience. I know it I sounds- I did not realize cool. it's been five years. It's been a lot in <laughs> April, it'll be five years. Yeah. Um, and, you know, also, you know, my background is in health education. And so I've done, you know, personal training, health coaching, that sort of thing. So that tonight's program is, you know, I, caught it, I sort of use that lens, the, the behavior change and, you know, health coaching lens to come up with, with this, these steps in this program. And then Mickey's background is in cooking, budgeting, just homemaking, <laughs> you know, she homes, has homeschooled our children for I forgot how many years now. Seven now, I think. Right. And so, you know, she's the budget queen. She's <laughs> the meal planning queen. And that's where uh, her expertise comes in, right? Yep. All right. And friendly reminder, we're not doing we're not medical, medical advice. Right. We're not medical professionals, so we can't answer any medical specific questions you might have. Right. 
that's out of our scope. All right. So hopefully that gave you time to check out that handout for those that wanted to. And let's get into it. So the very first step is to step one is to get clear on what you want. So this is really important in the beginning because there's so many different ways to do plant-based. There's so many different ways to do vegan. Mm -hmm. And if you're not clear on what that is, it's easy to get lost in the weeds later on. It's easy to get overwhelmed and it's easy to just get off track, right? So you want to remember your why or know what your why is. Why are you doing this? Is it for a health change? Is it for... Um, is it for the animals? Is it a an econ um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like environmental thing. I was gonna say economic, but I was thinking That's environment. Not right, yeah. right. It could be an economical thing. You want to save money and you can save money mm -hmm. on your grocery by doing this. So what's your why, right? And that's gonna help you figure out, you know, are you going for a whole foods plant-based diet? Are you are, are you cool with including vegan meats? Are you not? Some people want to cut oils out. Some people who are big animal activists want to cut out palm oil, even though it's plant-based, for example. Um, are you cool with vegan junk food, quote unquote? So, you know, so many ways to go about it. The first step is just really getting clear on what you're going for and outlining that. And so you have a very clear picture and definition of what you're going toward. And that's going to set you up for the rest of the steps for the rest of your journey really well. Not saying this can't change over time, but you know, it's, it's good to get your clear vision first when you're making this change, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the new year is a, is a time when a lot of people try to uh, jump in and, and make some changes and um, you know, do have some successful months, but then it gets a little bit hard. And so hopefully um, this will help uh, help with staying the course. And then, um, you know, as we get through, we'll talk about, you know, family gatherings and stuff like that as well. Right. And, and one good thing about that is, you know, every time you try to make a change and then quote unquote fail or fall off or whatever, um, you get closer to doing it forever. Right. Mm -hmm. Like if people who are trying to quit smoking, if you've tried 25 times, Try 26, try 27, try 38. Yep. You're going to get there eventually, but each time you get closer to that. So yeah. just stick each with it. Each time you're, you have a little bit more success is still success. Right. So yeah. And hopefully you get some inspiration with yeah. the rest of the presentation. Yep. All right. So, so step two, you want to figure out where's the last to go. Yes. And, you know, we say this because a lot of times people let like one or two things stop them from making any change. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. I want to go vegan, but I cannot live without cheese. I would die without cheese. So we I hear that a lot. We hear that a, a lot. lot, a lot. And cheese was cheese and eggs was one of my things that I was just like, I could never be vegan because of cheese and eggs. And then like this, you would think this might be a little obvious, but it's kind of not because we didn't think of it. We just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, but I do, especially cheese, I hear it a lot. Right. So, you know, what we say is why let that stop you from making change? Go vegan, except for cheese, mm -hmm. figure out cutting everything else out of your diet. And then once you get comfortable with that and you, you feel, uh, you know, you, comfortable, comfortable and you have, yeah. you know, the learning curve for, for some of the steps with adopting, you know, plant-based diet um, are might be a little steeper for you than other steps. So once you, you know, accomplish one thing and you've sort of made it over that learning curve and you're at sort of a new plateau, then you take on something else. And it's this sort of step-by-step -step, um, increase. Exactly. And then when you put the, that last thing to cut out on the mm -hmm. back burner, it takes a lot of the stress it out does. and you can just relax and, and you don't have so much pressure on you, right? Yeah. Cause you're not like, it's not this dark cloud, like I'm going to have to quit cheese one day. Mm -hmm. And I also included coffee because I hear that one a lot too. Like I want to be vegan, but I'm a coffee snob and I have to have the perfect latte. And it's like, okay, well, let that be the last yeah. thing that we, that we tackle. Mm -hmm. Right. Even though there are some amazing coffee, uh, you know, plant-based things, but mm -hmm. without getting lost in the weeds, this is an important step. 
to get you moving into action for a lot of people. And we forgot to mention at the beginning, if any of these steps don't really apply to you, or if you've already done mm-hmm. them, that's totally fine. You mm-hmm. can just skip to the next one. You know, it's one of those skip to step three, if this doesn't apply to it's, you. You get to check that off. Right. <laughs> check the box. I'm a, I'm a cross it off the list, <laughs> check it kind of gal. So yeah, there you go. All right. So step three is to assess your barriers, mm-hmm. right? So it's important to anticipate you because you're going to face, you're going to have barriers Mm -hmm. along the way, right? We don't live in a perfect world and it's important to anticipate what those might be and brainstorm strategies for overcoming them ahead of time. That way, when you hit those barriers, you're not deer in headlights and it doesn't throw you off course. You, you've already knew it was coming. You saw that hurdle. 10 steps away and you were prepared to jump in way yeah and that. and it's you're not going to be able to you know anticipate everything but there's some you know we put up on here some things to think about like do you know how to cook if you don't if you really have very minimal skills in cooking then that might be something that you need to work on as you're as you are um, adopting this lifestyle you might need to find some youtube videos or ask a friend or another family member to help you um, increase those skills uh, then another one that's big is like, do you even buy the food in your house? Mm-hmm. Are you the one doing the shopping? And and how is if you're not, how does how will that conversation go? How can you be more involved? Um, and and that kind of thing. Or or do you do you even have access to to um, plant based foods? You know, if if you're at if you're um, getting food from a food bank you know, what, what plant-based foods do they have at the food bank that, that you could um, try to get more of and replace some of the things that you're trying to remove from your diet with the plant-based foods, or maybe trade with somebody who, like, if you get a food box and, um, you know, your friend gets a food box and they're not eating the beans fast enough and you don't want the milk, maybe you guys can trade or something, you know, just those kinds of things that, um, you know, look at, that you can anticipate and look at what are my barriers. And if it's just a lack of information, then, you know, let's do some research. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So you're ready for all of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very well said. Awesome. So that's step three. All right. Step four. Now we're ready to set our goal and we want to make sure this is a smart goal. So many of you, you might've heard of this acronym before, Um, Anytime you're setting a goal, you want to make sure it's specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. So that way you can, you know, goals that aren't specific enough, goals that aren't measurable, a lot of times they can either just make us feel overwhelmed, they can make us feel like we're not sure what actions to take and when, you know, um, we we might not be sure when we're actually starting and and finishing, is there a finish? Um, So making sure that it's that it's specific, you know, one. So uh, step one that we talked about comes in handy here. We're, we're really narrowing down what change are we making mm-hmm. first? Did we put cheese on the back burner and first we're just focusing on meat or eggs or maybe we need to be more specific and just start with red meat mm-hmm. and, and do it in steps like that. So what, what specifically are we doing right now? What action are we taking right now? Um, measurable so are we you know doing all red meat is it a meatless monday is it five days a week type of thing um you one know, meal a day one meal a day what is it going to be right here is it achievable are you aiming too high do you currently follow a standard american diet and then you're going to jump into a whole foods plant-based diet on february 10th maybe that's not achievable right that might be rough <laughs> that might be a little challenging right And then you want to make sure it's realistic. So this is where the barriers come in. Mm -hmm. And this is where, you know, if you're like, I'm going to stop eating out, but you don't know how to cook. Mm -hmm. That's not realistic, Mm -hmm. right? So you want to tailor your goal to what you can realistically accomplish. Instead instead of I'm going to stop eating out, it might be I'm going to cook two new meals at home this week. Right. And I'm going to learn how to make rice and I'll make it twice this week. Something specific like that. Exactly, so Mm -hmm. that it's realistic for you. And then timely. So do you have a timetable? Do you have a deadline? Are you, what date are you starting? Is there a finish line? You know, what, 
this will help you be able to know if you achieved it or not. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to do it for the entire month of March, um, something like that. And you want this to be realistic as well, too, because um, sometimes we need those wins. Yeah. And so don't stretch it out to this big, long thing and this big lofty goal. Um, definitely make it a smart one and have it be timely that you can, yes, I did it. And then it's inspiring and motivating. And it's helpful to keep us going. Yeah. As mm -hmm. opposed to like, I'm going to go vegan on January 1st. And then that was, that was maybe a little aiming a little too high or something like that. But if you say, I'm going to cut out red meat on January 1st, and then I'm going to cut out chicken on February 1st and then eggs on mm -hmm. March. And then you're like, wow, it's October and I'm vegan now. Right. You know? And celebrate the little steps along the way so this could work you know smart goals could work for anything you could apply this to any area of your life and they could work for cutting things out or adding or things. adding things in so we have some examples here of some not so smart goals and then some smart goals right so a lot of people will set a goal like i'm going to stop eating meat that's my goal and like we said this is overwhelming this is what steps are we taking i don't even know where to start <clears throat> but if we say i'm going to stop eating red meat beginning March 1st, now we've narrowed it down. It's more specific. It's measurable. Mm -hmm. We feel like it's achievable. Um, you know, we're not aiming too high by cutting out everything we've ever known right? <laughs> and starting from scratch. So this is something that we can actually accomplish and move forward. Mm -hmm. Set us into action because we know what actions there are. I have to get the red meat out of my house. Mm -hmm. I have to look at what recipes and foods I eat without red meat. Like there's action steps with it. A not so smart goal would be, I'm going to start eating more greens right? A lot of people are like, green. That's my new year's resolution. <laughs> I'm going to eat more greens, but it's like, oh, where do I start? What does that mean? What does that mean? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. You know, or we could say I'm going to eat one serving of greens at least four times a week for the entire month of March. Because mm -hmm. then it's not like, oh, something I have to do for the rest of my life. Right. But if you just set that goal for March, chances are you're going to feel comfortable. You're going to boost your mm -hmm. confidence with it. You're going to feel confident and then you can carry it into April, May, June. Right and so forth right? right it becomes that you know the that curve lessens and it's not steep and then you hit that plateau where you are just maintaining eating at least one serving of greens four times a week and you just move on to your next goal exactly so hopefully this you know helped outline how to set goals and, and make sure that they're smart and that's step four so you've set your goal you know what you're what we're doing first right mm -hmm. step five Mm. learn to read food labels and maybe you already know how to read food labels or maybe you're completely new to this so but the the point is you want to learn how to read them to determine if they are if the food is plant-based or not you know if, if a, a packaged food you got to be able to go through it and see does it is it is it plant-based or not so if it mm -hmm. has you know meat in it obviously that eliminates it if it's got milk and eggs that eliminates it so a couple tricks is you know you're going to want to read through the ingredients list anyway but first just before we read them uh, we will weed them out because common allergies need to be listed in bold mm -hmm. either at the bottom like the one on the left or just bolded in the list like the one on the right so we usually just skim you know, just scan the allergens to see if they have milk and or egg. Mm -hmm. As you could tell, both of these have milk, so neither of these ones are vegan. Mm -hmm. The one on the right has egg, so it's also not plant-based either. And so that's our first step, first is step. we just look for the contains or the bolded words. And then if it has it, it just goes back on the shelf. We don't look at it any longer. If we don't see any, then we get a little more specific looking for some things. And what are some things that are not listed as allergens. So, you know, meat would be one thing mm -hmm. that wouldn't be listed as an allergen, except for fish. Um, broth, like, you know, oh, yeah. meat broth mm -hmm. or stuff like that, lard. Yep. And then other, you know, common offenders are gelatin. Yeah, and honey. gelatin and honey, yeah. So you're just kind of looking through those. And your smart goal might be, you know, like, oh, I'm, I'm overwhelmed already thinking about honey and gelatin and stuff like that. Maybe your smart goal is just meat, milk, and eggs. Mm -hmm. And we're starting there. So now you're learning food labels and getting accustomed to that. And then you build on that later. Right. <clears throat> but so, yeah, those are the, the common things that we're looking for. And once you start doing this for a long time, 
you get like laser fast. <laughs> you do. You, know? you really do. You're a little slow at first. And then if it's extra small, you might need to use your finger a little <laughs> bit, but <laughs> you do, you do pick up speed on it. Yeah. But I'm almost like a barcode scanner. I'm like, no, he no, is. I'm sometimes vegan, I'm like, I think this is vegan. <laughs> and he'd be like, nope, it's got gelatin. <laughs> Darn it. I missed it. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then also the logos on the bottom, mm -hmm. the three on the left, those, if you see those on a food, those are going to be plant-based for sure. And, you know, if it's certified vegan or, you know, vegan approved, that tells you just right off the bat, you don't even have to look at the right. ingredients or anything. Or if you're, if you're like me and you don't trust, <laughs> you have trust issues, you'll probably read <laughs> the ingredients anyway, just to make sure they knew what they were talking about. But so my eyes can't pick these ones out as fast. And I spy <laughs> those right away. She'll yeah. start reading the ingredients. I'll be like, reading. He's right like, there. it's right there. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> And then the ones on the right aren't necessarily telling you that it's plant-based. Well, the one that's cruelty-free and vegan, mm -hmm. that one's going to, yeah, it would be um, plant-based or vegan. But the one that's not tested on animals, that doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't have animal products in it. So it's a little bit tricky. Mm -hmm. But those three on the left, you know, just burn them in your memory and, and look for those and mm -hmm. scan for those. All right, step six. And I don't think we can stress how important we think this step this is. This is like, we're going to be a broken record because this, I think, is probably one of the biggest keys to success for making lasting, sustainable change to plant-based. Right. Like, you want to veganize the meals that you fall back on when you're half asleep at night, when you're exhausted, when you, when you're not awake yet in the morning, like, what are you, is it just, you know, toast and butter and coffee, make your replacements, figure it out. You know, do you fall back on pasta with meat sauce a lot? Just find the things that you fall back on all the time um, or often and make them vegan. This mm -hmm. I think is, and that's why, because we're, we're creatures of habit, right? Mm -hmm. And so whenever the going gets tough, and it does, we're all living our lives, we're living in this world, we get stressed out, we get tired, we whatever. We want to fall back on the meals that we find to be convenient, mm -hmm. comforting, delicious. Satisfying. And, and, and cost effective or yeah. cheap or whatever mm -hmm. you want to say. So that's why we, we're not saying to veganize your five favorite meals. Mm. These aren't your favorite things. These are your go-tos, the ones you eat most often. You know, toast and butter, that's not my favorite meal, but I do <laughs> eat it pretty often, sadly. <laughs> These days anyway, I'm just going to throw it out there, yeah. right? Um, you know, my favorite breakfast is something more elaborate, right? but our go-to ones so that you can make this sustainable because when, when you get overwhelmed, when you're tired, if you've already veganized your go-tos mm -hmm. and you've made them to your satisfaction, you can stay the course. Yeah. It's so much easier to stay the course. Yeah. And uh, what was I going to, what else was I going to, oh, and so you want to make sure um, that, you know, and, and we talked about this, actually, we did a podcast episode. We have a podcast called Teach Me How to Vegan. And we did a whole episode about this. And we talked about the importance of not sacrificing especially in terms of taste, texture, price, and convenience. So you want to get your replacement, like not just good enough, mm, right? Mm -hmm. And not because then you'll be like, it, it'll get old. And you'll be like, okay, I just, I want the real thing. This mm -hmm. isn't doing it. Mm -hmm. You want it to blow your mind. And, and like, you can't even imagine that it's as good as the non-vegan version. When something's then you're good. super delicious, I end up doing a little dance. I'm like, like if it's not making you dance <laughs> when you enjoy it, then keep working at it. She dances and I close my eyes and stop. I close, I turn off all my senses except for taste it so does. I can really take it in. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to do those things, right? And yeah. so there's an easy four-step process. First, you just determine what makes it not vegan and you use your knowledge of how to read food labels and, and your knowledge that you've built already. It's probably less than you think. Right. It's usually just the meat or just the broth or something like mm -hmm. that. Then step Toast two. Toast and coffee. We're talking creamer and butter. Done. So <laughs> determine what swaps you can make without sacrificing those things. And there are so many swaps. And we have more um, infographics like this on our blog, on our website, mm -hmm. and, and a whole blog post about the swaps and 
and um, substitutes. So figure out what you can what you can swap with, make the swaps and try it out, and then make adjustments if necessary and or as new, more amazing products come out. Because every time we turn around, there's something new and amazing that we want to try, right? Mm -hmm. And it's as simple as that because you know I, I always stress people think you know now that I'm now that I'm going plant based I need a whole new recipe for pozole I don't know how to make pozole anymore, and that's not the case at at all. Take your current pozole recipe, and just figure out what makes it not vegan. For mm -hmm. us, it was literally broth and meat, mm -hmm. and then we just swapped the meat for a dip for a, a plant based meat, mm -hmm. and we swapped the broth with a plant based broth, and we're done. Yeah, do everything else the exact and same. And it's so so good. Right. So good. And then we we made adjustments to try different things out. Mm -hmm. Let's try jackfruit. Let's try the morning star chicken. Let's try seitan. Get the one that we love the most. That, yeah. And then we're done. And yeah. it was fun to to play around with it, right? And so familiarizing yourself with with the plant based swaps and ingredients is really helpful. And that's where you know, like I said, check out our podcast and or our blog post and just kind of explore more stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we do have a question about where is the vegan cheese in the supermarket? And that is a great question because it honestly, it depends on the supermarket. Sadly, Yeah, it depends on the store. So um, at Walmart, um, there's usually a vegan cheese and it's in the like cold section by the produce. Mm -hmm. And that's where their like soy riso is, the field roast sausage is. Um, that's where their tofu the is. The not dogs, their tofu, um, vegan cheese, vegan cheese slices. So at Walmart, it's not by the regular cheese at all. It's in that section. Um, at Sprouts, I Sprouts think- Sprouts just re they did, okay. fairly recently redid it to where the, all the plant-based stuff is in one cold section. Oh, okay. So it's all together. So that's where you'll get all the cheeses and the milks and everything. It's like in one thing. Okay. And there's a big- I think sign or something that says plant-based. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, they then, recently intentionally did that. Yeah. So it's all together. And we haven't like been in many stores. We've been doing pickup lately. Lately, <laughs> so. yeah, yeah. Um, so, but I think at um, like Whole Foods, it was, did they have a plant-based section or it was kind of mixed? It's not by like their fancy cheeses. I know that. Yeah, it's, it's kind more of in like the back. in like a cold section thing. Um near the like regular ones but not like by the fancy cheeses and stuff but at, at walmart i can tell you the like silk yogurt is by the other yogurt the uh, non-dairy butter like the vegan butters are by the regular butters and the silks and other milks are by the other milks and stuff right um and then like the daya um like box mac and cheese is on the shelves in the shelves uh within the aisle and sometimes it's by um the the uh, the like regular mac and cheese and sometimes it's in the like gluten-free section if it happens to have gluten-free noodles yeah so yeah I, I thought it was I always check the gluten-free section yeah. just in case because they also put the vegan ranch there yeah one time. sometimes the like, deal doesn't was make there. any sense like <laughs> But they just thought, you know, because some people like to do gluten-free and vegan. Mm -hmm. So maybe they thought that was a good place for it. So yeah. check all, all of the above sometimes. Yeah. But pro to Walmart, the cheese, the vegan cheeses are in the like cold section produce area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just remember, if you try one and you don't like it, don't swear Keep off trying. all yes. the things, right? Yeah. Like we've all tried, you know, cow burgers that were gross, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that they're all gross. And the same thing with all of these products, you know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Yeah. All right. Step seven, determine which foods you like that are accidentally vegan, Yeah. <laughs> quote unquote. Cool. Yeah. So there's a lot of foods already that are just naturally vegan. Mm -hmm. Like they didn't set out to make a vegan product, but the food is vegan. And so again, this one is really almost as important as the last one. Because again, we want to fall back on things that are familiar mm -hmm. to us, that we've grown up with, that are comforting, whatever the case may be. You know, for me, is Frito pies are really important in my life. So knowing that Fritos <laughs> are, are plant-based slash vegan was amazing yeah. for me. You know, uh, even if you're, you're looking for like healthier, ready-made products, hummus is always mm -hmm. there for you. And that's vegan, you know, been vegan since day one surprising you might be surprised when you venture out and now that you know how to read the food labels most breads 
bagels, mm -hmm. pastas, I mean, chips, crackers, there's so many things out there. Yeah. And even, you know, like I'm, I'm shocked at like fruit pies mm -hmm. that are vegan, mm -hmm. you know? Um, oh, with the chips, I do want to make a point with the chips is check the different brands. Cause I think it's the Walmart brand and Lay's barbecue that are accidentally vegan, but some other brands of barbecue are not vegan. They have milk. Right. So just keep, keep looking at different brands. If you find something that is, is a go-to for you and it's not accidentally vegan, look at other brands and there, you might be able to find one that is. Yeah. Yeah. And this is, again, it's really helpful to just help you stay the course mm -hmm. you know i love sour patch kids i don't eat them on a regular basis by any but they're means a nice tree once a year but for halloween, halloween. i want some sour patch kids. <laughs> you already knew i knew, I knew it was going to <laughs> halloween <laughs> you know it's it's important yeah and, and it doesn't to not throw you off course yeah. and be like we're throwing it out today because it's halloween yeah. nope we already know what we're gonna do yeah movie night when you know you used to if you, i don't know before you go to the movie theaters if you'd go to the dollar tree and buy the candy the box candy <laughs> at the dollar tree instead of the movie theater check those out you'd be surprised what's accidentally vegan right. like junior mints. junior mints we don't do that of course <laughs> So, and it's not, I, we have a lot of junk food on here, but there's a lot of stuff that's not junk food too. Yeah. Like I was pointing out, you know, breads, bagels, all that, mm -hmm. all that good stuff. All right. Step eight is you want to learn, or I guess it's relearn how to eat, eat out, out, right? Yeah. Relearn. Eating yeah. out while eating out, learn how to eat out vegan mm -hmm. because, you know, um, not every restaurant has a, a vegan menu or vegan options. And so you just want to make sure that you know how to do this. So, and this, you know, will come with time, but just yeah. to start out, look for vegan restaurants in your area or look for restaurants that have vegan or plant-based options. options. Yeah. So in New Mexico, we have our New Mexico dining guide that has um, broken out by city. So you can locate restaurants. The criteria to be included in the guide is that a restaurant has to have at least two entrees mm. that are vegan. So you're not doing this calculation like this graphic <laughs> out of, <laughs> you know, sides and stuff. You're right. not doing that. You've got at least two options that, that you was, could just say, I want this off this the menu. Thing, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Cause you know, three years ago, even, mm -hmm. you know, today, a lot of restaurants will label their vegan options or their plant-based options. It's very clear. And then back then you're, you know, when we first started out, it's like, Mm, they have beans they have potatoes yeah is your rice do you use chicken stock in your rice no okay we could use rice hmm. well, they've got chili mm -hmm. tortillas yeah. Right? yeah yeah there was one restaurant we went to actually that we literally couldn't eat anything the rice had oh, but chicken stock the beans had lard the tortillas had large potatoes were cooked the with beef. beef yeah and citas had something so, yeah like, like everything really... there was like just have Nothing. some chips and salsa yeah it was it, it was incredible and then they revamped their menu because there was the four of us it was us and the two kids out with um some family, some whatever, family at the time and it, half of us couldn't eat there and the the waitress like felt so bad it was really incredible yeah. so so you don't really have to do that much anymore <laughs> right and another thing that can help you out is just googling literally the words eating, eating vegan mm -hmm. at yes say you know your family wants to grab food from denny's mm -hmm. you're like i have no idea what denny's has just google eating vegan at denny's yep chances are you know there's a blog post or some Somebody's type of article or information you know or even you know oh so and so is going to swing by taco bell eating vegan at taco bell mm -hmm. there's a whole post that tells you exactly what you can yep. get and if all else fails you can macgyver some <laughs> <laughs> some things yeah you know just by asking questions do you use lard in your beans do you use chicken stock mm -hmm. um things you like that. your baked potato and butter because sometimes you know you can get okay can i just get you know steamed vegetables and a baked potato with um salsa instead of butter and sour cream on it right you know? and ask the questions because they might use margarine instead of butter right. and margarine's accidentally vegan right for example or they might use you know um, a buttery spread that's accidentally vegan a lot of times they are and so, you know, just ask the questions and, and figure it out and, you know, explore the many options. A lot of New Mexican places, a lot of Asian, mm -hmm. a lot of sushi places have vegan yes. options. A lot of, you know, Middle Eastern, you can get some really good stuff without 
having to oh my gosh middle eastern is one of my favorite because you get falafel hummus pita and dolma there you go done yeah, yeah. all right yeah so oh, and happy cow is an app mm -hmm. and you uh can put in your location and it will bring up um either vegan restaurants or vegan options at restaurants and right. so that's uh, really great. So it saved our life whenever we travel. Yeah. And helped us find some absolute gems. Best pizza in, in the middle of nowhere. Ev or just ever we found through the Happy Cow app. Yeah. Yeah. So that was in St. Louis. Sorry. Yeah. It's not local. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're in St. Louis. Yeah. Um, all right. So yeah, we're doing good on time. Do put any other questions you have in the QA box or in the chat. Um, we will have a We'll have a little time for questions at the end. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just wanted to do a little time check. All right, step nine. Now, now we feel it's a good time to explore your resources. Like we talked about in the beginning, it might be overwhelming, information overload. There's too many recipes in the world. Yes, <laughs> too many websites. <laughs> but now that we're in a place where if we get overwhelmed, we can fall back on our go-to meals. Mm -hmm. We can fall back on the foods we like. That are accidentally vegan. We have our routine. Now let's go out and see what else is out there, right? So, you know, of course, our website, we've got lots of recipes. We've got blog posts to peruse. We have our podcast, Teach Me How to Vegan, where we go more in depth about some of these steps. Uh, the podcast itself is basically like a how to guide to, to go vegan. And then, you know, there's more different, exploring different topics like. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, talking to your family, getting your family on board, things of that nature. Yeah. Um, vegan Outreach has some great resources. They have a 10 weeks to vegan program where it's one email a week for 10 weeks. And they talk about different replacement products, some nutrition information um, is created by a registered dietitian. So, you know, you can start learning a little more, gain those little nutrition bites. Um, and then uh, PCRM, like we talked about at the beginning, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, there's good um, nutrition information on there, mm -hmm. more recipes to explore and things like that. Nutritionfacts.org has really great short little videos about nutrition, of course, <laughs> um, taking all of the research and breaking it down to what you know normal folk like you and I can understand. Yeah. Um, and then lots more resources, too, in terms of food assistance. If you're accessing your food through different programs, um, you know, and, and you're not able to just purchase all of your food, there are really great programs that provide vegan food or plant-based food to those in need. So, mm -hmm. you know, locally here in the Albuquerque area, Positive Links is doing their Operation Kindness, where you can get vegan food from La Salita, and mm -hmm. you can also get food for your companion animals as well through their program. So that's great to access. Um, ABQ Mutual Aid, like our, our local mutual aid <clears throat> program, they got it going on. And you can actually check your dietary needs uh, when you apply to get a food package from them and you can check vegan. And mm -hmm. so, you know, they'll do their best to get you plant-based milks and make sure they're getting you other stuff like beans and peanut butter and all that good stuff and some fresh produce as well, as much as they can. Then the Roadrunner Food Bank has a healthy food center that you can ask them about accessing where they've got the plant-based plant -based milks, milks. Yep. And, and the whole food center itself is like 90% plant-based. Mm -hmm. So great uh, yeah. resource to get and more. And the, the healthy food center, food center that's where um, pre-pandemic you were doing um, demos and stuff yeah. so people could taste stuff. And Tony made it a point to make sure he was getting items from the food center so people could see how to use some of the items there that they might not normally get. Um, yeah. And so it's, it's there, there's some really great programs. And then, so these are also great programs that if, if you, if you um, don't need the assistance, but would like to support them, there you go as well. Yeah. Promote some good point. Yeah. <laughs> promote some uh, plant-based eating for all. Exactly. And increasing access. Yeah. Access increasing access is, is important. Yeah. All right. And then step 10 is just to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also, you know, this is this is a place where you can take it to the next step. Right. So and explore even more. Now is a good time. Let's try new recipes with ingredients we've never heard mm -hmm. of before. 
let's learn how to cook foods we've never even purchased or tried in our life, you know, Swiss chard. I've never even known what that was. Now's a good time to try it out. I don't think I ever had sushi before going vegan, actually. And I certainly never made sushi before being plant-based. So like sushi and making curry at home, Mm -hmm. that was new. Um, So you really get to expand your repertoire. Yeah. And we're still in this phase, you know, because we're still, we're exploring new things every day. Mm -hmm. Today, I made a blue cheese dressing that I've never made before in my life. (laughs) And yeah, I didn't eat. And gumbo the other day. And the other day, Mm -hmm. gumbo. Yeah, we never, I never made that. And it was the first time. So we're constantly expanding that repertoire and checking out new recipes, new things we've never cooked with with before. Mm -hmm. And it makes it exciting. It helps keep you inspired and keep you motivated. Mm -hmm. Right. And then this is where, um, you know, we had uh, part of the question earlier was about, um, uh, let's say, um, local inspirations and um, family gatherings and stuff. So, so maybe joining some vegan groups is, is where you can uh, get some of that support. And, um, you know, pre-pandemic that's, we weren't, we didn't, there was nobody in our life, I think, that was plant-based when we went plant-based. When we first went, no. When we first went, no. And then so all of the um, community that, you know, we know now was met through, you know, Facebook groups and stuff and um, meetups and and joining uh, groups and such like that. So that is a really, that can be a really good place to get connected. And then I think, you know, um, navigating family get togethers is challenging. And we have a, we addressed this in one of our podcast episodes. uh, Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. so maybe in a follow-up email we'll be sure to um, point out exactly which one that was um I think it was um getting the family on board it might have been that episode it's one of our earlier episodes we talk a lot (laughs) (laughs) so we'll we'll definitely point that one out there's there's a lot of things that you can consider and and try to do to navigate the family get togethers mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. um but yeah, and then there's also a lot of um, opportunity to be involved in the community. There's um, some local, a local sanctuary that you can um, visit and um, meet some like uh, rescued uh, farm animals and volunteer there or do their fundraisers. You know, everything's a little different because of the pandemic right now, but there is a community that you can get plugged into Mm -hmm. locally. Um, Santuario de Coruna is the um, sanctuary and they're pretty active and have fundraisers and such. Um, And even even if it's just getting plugged in to support the fundraisers, because there's there's always some cookies or yes. some baked good <laughs> positive links to some, or something yeah. to buy that's vegan that yep. supports a good cause. cause and so yeah. you can always justify buying vegan fudge, you know, <laughs> to help a good organization or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes that's just fun. And yeah, you get to know people through that, you mm-hmm. know, by by doing those types of things or supporting the local food trucks and yeah, and things of that nature, right? Yeah. Or you might just do you, stay focused on your SMART goals, set a new Mm -hmm. SMART goal and keep going, keep elevating toward that ultimate goal that you want, uh, the ultimate vision that you want to go for, right? Yeah, yep. All right, if there's any further questions, we're going to hang out for a couple more Mm -hmm. minutes just to make sure that we don't leave any um, open questions out or anything like that. you know, this is the Q&A time. So if you want to share anything, um, please do. If you and need us to go over a step again, if if maybe you missed something or or uh, Tony talked kind of fast on a couple of them, it felt like maybe just let us know and we can go over it. So, so. So, oh yeah, Trader Joe's does have a lot of good stuff as well. Um, they their vegan cheese is hit or miss i haven't i haven't been in months to trader joe's actually um so i don't know what the status is but the last time i was there they did not have a consistent um supply of their vegan cheese but it was in the regular cheese section i can tell you that Mm -hmm. um they have a good cream cheese yes i like their cream cheese 
or mm-hmm. I did, that was hit or miss too during, during the oh, pandemic okay. at one point. Yeah. Um, their dumplings though, they have a really great dumplings wow. and they're like already made falafel are like sometimes staples for us when we need the like um, easy to cook mm-hmm. things at home. And with the dumplings, I make it like I would get a Thai vegan, but I put more rice. So I put, I make a bowl of rice and then I shred some carrot and put some lettuce in it. Mm-hmm. And then I do the dumplings and then I get the Trader Joe's Goya sauce, Goiza, Goiza sauce mm-hmm. and pour that on it. And it's, it looks like it's from Thai vegan. <laughs> you could fool me. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, and the kids really enjoy it too. So the, those and the falafel there, the ready-made And falafel. they also have the meatballs, yes, the meatless the Trader meatballs jo- yes. that are Trader Joe's brand. And I've served those at a lot of different events and people love yeah. them everywhere. And, and sometimes um, they're really delicious as like an appetizer in barbecue sauce. Mm-hmm. The Trader Joe's barbecue sauce. It's really good like that yeah. as well. And I like them because you don't have to, there's no like minimal, uh, they're already cooked. Yeah. So you just heat them. You're just heating them you up. You just throw them in a sauce or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Perfect for like Super Bowl or. Yes. Or yeah. just because. <laughs> just because <laughs> yeah but the barbecue ones were so popular at that one at that one event we served them at yeah um yeah so and then yeah just definitely uh um don't worry ask as many questions as you want this is the time so uh but yeah check out the podcast too that might be really helpful yeah um and then breakfast oh, burritos yes. without eggs good question so <laughs> we are big fans of tofu as an like egg, egg replacer yeah. for like scrambled eggs and mm-hmm. stuff. And so, you know, there's a re- tofu scramble recipe on the website. And then there's also a fried eggs recipe mm-hmm. on the website, which doesn't use like super exotic ingredients or anything, pretty normal stuff. Yeah. And we've even simplified them as much as we can. Yeah. Cause we're, we like to simple as we could. Yeah. Go. And the fried egg is you like, Fry, saute up some tofu and you make a like a uh, eggy sauce is what we call it for like the egg yolk for like the egg yolk and it's really delicious and then the other thing that's really good is the tofu breakfast bake yeah put into a burrito with the eggy sauce yeah there's yeah go to the yeah on, <laughs> on our website where it says plant-based recipes go to the yeah, tofu breakfast bake and then go to the fried egg recipe and just make the like the sauce part yeah and then pour it in there with green chili or not oh my gosh it's thing. so good yeah but that's the yeah. best burrito and, you're and ever gonna make. we worked kind of hard or I kind of worked hard at breakfast because I didn't realize how much eggs I was eating yeah. before we went plant-based yeah. I apparently because breakfast was really really hard for me for a long time with going plant-based and it's because I had so much um egg I was eating so much eggs. So definitely um, we we found a couple of go-tos with the tofu that just hit it. They hit that spot. And Tony's wife writing, typing in the website for um, those recipes. Yeah. <clears throat> the egg stuff really cha- changed my life. <laughs> I'm so <not> dramatic. <laughs> changed my life (laughs) but um it really made it sustainable and and motivating because I was into eggs too and like huevos rancheros Mm -hmm. and all that good stuff yeah um and we actually did a whole webinar on egg-free cooking and we demonstrated some of these recipes including quiche Mm -hmm. and huevos rancheros and that's on our on our youtube oh my gosh the quiche is so good the kids ask for it a lot the quiche is that good yeah sorry so highly recommend checking (laughs) that out too it's recorded on there yeah and that's um do you have the do you know the youtube YouTube, um, yeah we'll put the youtube link directly into the chat as well so that it's easy for you because i forget exactly what it is and all of our past webinars are on this youtube channel as well so you can binge watch the channel you can uh, binge listen to the podcast and check out the website for recipes and such and shoot off um, emails to tony as well i'm just gonna um, i'm just gonna link the egg webinar and then you can peruse peruse the channel from there yeah i think we have an egg-free cooking and then didn't did we do oh yeah it was this one 
that the breakfasts were in. Mm -hmm. All right, there's that. <clears throat> yeah, and so I think that, you know, how we figured out with the egg stuff, that's a good example of recognizing like, like, oh, wow, I breakfast are really hard for me. I was eating a lot of eggs. How can I find an adequate and delicious and good, subs, you know, replacement? And, and so that's what we did. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you like some of that too. <laughs> making sure we got through all of these. All right, I feel like there was one more thing that was gonna link, but <clears throat> it's escaping me right now. But yeah, we'll send out a follow-up email with the, the, the recording of this webinar. Um, and if, if anyone has any questions in the meantime, you can reach out through email. Mm -hmm. Please do, we're happy to to continue following up and ans answering more questions. Um, and you should have the email. I'm just going to put it down here. In the chat. In the chat. Thank yeah. you so much for coming. Thank you for, you know, chatting it up and asking so many questions. It's, it's really nice to be engaged with uh, the participants and attendees and stuff. Yeah, this was fun. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate and, it. Yeah, we will. Talk to you again soon. We'll see you at a future webinar. We've got one planned for March, which we'll announce in that follow-up <laughs> email. We're pretty excited for it. And usually we do cooking and demonstrations and yeah. have food and stuff. So it'll yeah. be it'll be more exciting then. The webinar, the our most of our webinars have a demo aspect to it. This is the first one in a while that hasn't. So definitely look for that. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank have you. a great night and we'll see you again soon. <laughs>